welcome back to the sage. And thank you for having been with us. Thank you for having listened to us. But our thank you this time comes deep from deep within our hearts. Because we think the exercise we started with you last week is so important. It's so important to our country. It's so important to what we, as a common people, as a people who wish the best for our country, as a people determined to work for the good of our country, need to do starting from today forward. Yes, we started this move forward by looking critically at the 2023 elections and recognizing the fact that there were many achievements from that election. Yes, there are disappointments. There are, you know, usually there will be. But it is important that we all recognize that the achievements were major, significant, and must never be lost, but need to be built upon. And so last week, we discussed three. We talked about the huge turnout, the huge involvement in the elections, both prior, during, and which continue after the elections. We talked about the patriotism, the oneness, the bonhomie, the, the fellowship, the common bond that was evident amongst all of us during that election, as we prepared for that election. And we rejoiced in the fact that the election was actually one of the greatest acts of patriotism on our part as Nigerians in recent times. We discussed the wonderful youth movement that was so evident. Our young people were energized. Our young people worked. Our young people registered. Our young people voted. Oh yes. Our young people believed that was an unprecedented achievement. And we must never, never allow that hope and belief to die. And so this week, it is with pleasure that we move on to discuss a few more significant achievements because there are there were indeed many achievements please do write in and tell us some of yours we, that we may not have mentioned uh, by the end of this program but number four in our opinion is the fact that we were able to do something which many more organized and perhaps developed countries have been having problems in doing for many years. We were able to witness this time round the emergence of new, potentially strong political parties. Examples include the Labour Party, the NNPP, and some others. For the first time, we have increased the menu, so to say. Hopefully never in the future will Nigerians only be subjected to having to choose between two major political parties. But rather, there are more parties there. What it does for the electorate is that we, we have reduced their monopoly and therefore made it a little more difficult for the same powers that be to keep presenting themselves because they have to be presented by a political party. Because there are more political parties to shop from. And therefore these parties would hopefully 
knowing that we had high expectations, present candidates more in line with the people's expectation. Yes, I think we need to reflect and know that this is important, that it is an achievement and may perhaps be unprecedented because the tendency, if you look at the global powers and the major countries around the world, is that oftentimes they are struggling between two or at the most three major parties and, you know, it's either one end of the spectrum or the other. But in Nigeria, we were able to achieve a wider choice. And therefore, that is something to be rejoiced about, to pat ourselves on the back about. So that is number four, a wider choice when it comes to political parties. And who knows, perhaps next time there may even be more now that we know it can be indeed be done, even if they appear not to have structures at the moment. And so there's another one, there are more. In our opinion, the next one, the what I will call the fifth one, is looking back, we found ourselves humbled but proud to see the courageous courageous coverage of events by media. It was amazing. The coverage, the election preparations, and the post-election conduct has received attention and frank coverage it has received from many major news channels in our country. One thing I have always been proud of as a Nigerian who has traveled extensively myself is the courage our media have always exhibited in all times, in all seasons, whether during periods of dictatorship or periods of democracy, whether during, during periods of turmoil or periods of calm. It will be unfair of me if I don't mention a few of them. Of worthy of mention and networks like the Arise Television, the Channel, AIT, but many others whom I may not mention here. Also, the online media channels, online media um, reporting. They have been everywhere. They have had courage. Many of them have tried their best to report unbiased, to provide every party, every um, sector, the opportunity to voice their claims, their needs, their grievances, to share their manifestos, to campaign. And so I'd weed off our heart to the Nigeria media. But also of special mention in terms of media is the, our social media. Too many times when we talk about social media, we remember all the fake news and they are maligned for it. That did happen, continues to happen, but it does happen all over the world. But let me say that for us in Nigeria, we also need to recognize that the social media was very, very useful in making sure that all of us had information at our fingertips. The social media was actually also very instrumental to young people's involvement awareness of the election. It helped them mobilize. It helped them participate at all levels of the election. And so, yes, social media activity was huge, unprecedented, and to a large extent, very useful. So the media, 
They deserve recognition. There was great achievement in that area. And that is something for us to be proud of. And now perhaps to the sixth in line of notable achievements. This I, we have purposely left towards the end, but it can belong anyway, it may well belong to the first. But we discuss it at the end because it's, it has a singular place in this particular election. For the very first time, we as a country adopted electronic electoral voting system. There was great civil society and people action that brought the electoral acts into bill. We will never forget the 2022 electoral act amended. Nor will we ever forget the fact that we adopted a bimodal voters accreditation system, the BVAS. We, this very act, I think, in my opinion, contributed significantly to the trust our people in general, but particularly our young people, developed to the hope they now had that we will do things transparently, that we will indeed vote, that our votes will be counted and transmitted as promised in the electoral bill as never before. So we have witnessed that. And it is such an important landmark that no matter what we feel has been our experience with it in 2023, it is still potentially such a powerful mechanism for ensuring sust accountability and sustainability. And so it is an achievement we need to be proud of and we need to build upon. Never must we again in this country plan an election and conduct an election that isn't electronic and virtual. Because what we did notice is that it provided a fairly, fairly reliable means of accreditation of voters on that day. We had significant hiccups with transmission of some results, but that can be worked upon. That we will work in future to make sure never happens, even as we try to address whatever grievances we may have legitimately, peacefully. And so the fact that we as a country have that system is one to be very proud of. Another aspect of this issue of the electoral voting is what we are witnessing, particularly since the end of election itself, in terms of the emergence of talented young tech gurus from many, many parts of the country who have subsequently set up virtual live reporting and collating apps and indeed websites that will make it today and tomorrow possible for us for election results, election activities at units to also be simultaneously reported, collated and shared from other sites, even as the nation waits for the official reporting that needs to come from INEC. It shows ingenuity at its best and ingenuity, particularly amongst our young people. And so it's a move forward. Examples of this, of course, great examples include work by, by um, bodies like Collate Africa, but there are many more that are out there 
that are building these apps, improving on them, testing them. We are confident that by the time the next election comes along, there will be many more of these technical resources available for us to ensure the accountability and transparency of our voting. And so to my fellow Nigerians, to my fellow um, people, we don't lose hope. We rejoice in the achievements and the successes, determined to build on them so that it's even better next time. And so, within this and the previous segment, we have discussed six important achievements of the 2023 election. The huge display of patriotism, unparalleled, in the way we as a people, with a common objective, the good of our country, came out and voted. The brotherliness, the friendliness, all the efforts we invested in making sure the voting process succeeds. The huge, huge, huge youth turnout and participation, unprecedented. So many new time, new youth voters who actually came and voted. Wonderful. We talked about the courage of our media, the detailed, extensive media reporting at all levels. We talked about our technological innovation, the adoption, the passing of the electoral bill, that adoption of using the virtual mechanism to report and record our elections, and so many more. And so they are worthy achievements, achievements we must never forget, achievements that we need to internalize and build upon. I'm almost excited as I think about it, because come 2027, we shall do more. We shall perfect these ones. It has to be a forward journey. As a people, as a nation, we can never con accept going backwards. Yeah, we have to keep going forward. And so our common goal, the good of our country, requires and demands of us a forward movement movement to reclaim our country, to make our country truly great as it should be. We must never stop in our goal, in our quest to do so. We must always continue the forward ever action. We cannot afford to lose sight of our gains. We have gains. We've made historic achievements. We have a lot to be proud of, to be grateful to God for. It now remains for us to discuss, to continue our discussion and plotting our way forward so that each of us can see more clearly and can do more in reclaiming our country, in achieving our great destiny. Stay with us in the forthcoming episodes in which we will indeed go concretely into ways discussing with you that this can indeed we can all come together and make this our reality. We thank you, as usual, for being with us, for discussing with us, even as we excitedly prepare for the discussions that are coming up, which we know you will enjoy. We thank you once again. Thank you for being with us. See you next week. Come, come together.
together work for peace work to uphold our unity show strength show faith one and all oh come cast aside ethnic rivalry cast aside religious bigotry show strength show faith one and all let's sing a song let's sing a song a song of love is all we need work for peace let's fight for peace one and all we must we must we must work for peace together break the chains of greed and hate work for peace in place of war Show strength, show faith, one and all. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Every tribe, every tongue be on guard. Stay strong, together we'll defeat. Show strength, show faith, one and all. Let's sing a song, let's sing a song of humanity, great humanity. Let's kill the walls, let's kill the walls. We must fight, we must fight, fight, fight. We must, we must, we must fight for peace. But we must work, work, work. We must work, work, work. We must work, work, work. We must, we must, we must work for peace. Hey.